The earliest automobiles used a tiller for steering. That's a lever attached to a rudder. The first steering wheel appeared in 1894 in a car built by the Panhard Company of France. Today, the steering wheel is a multitasking component, integrating control switches and the driver's side airbag. A car steering wheel looks simple enough. A stylish ring with a horn in the middle and switches to operate the cruise control and other functions. Yet, despite this simplicity, a steering wheel design undergoes years of development and testing for safety, durability, appearance and function. The manufacturing process begins with the armature, the internal support structure. It's made of either aluminum or magnesium, strong yet lightweight metals. The factory's die casting system injects the hot molten metal into an armature shaped mold. Once the metal solidifies, the machine ejects the casting from the mold. The metal is still hot, so a robot arm moves the cast armature to a cooling area where cold air blows on it. They remove the excess metal left over from the casting process in one strike with a trimming die. And with that, the armature is finished and the steering wheel assembly can begin. First, a robot installs four rivets, the contact points for the horn system. When you press to honk the horn, the rivets complete an electrical circuit enabling the horn to sound. Next, a computer-guided engraver marks a lot number for quality control tracking. This demonstration shows the basis of the next step. When mixed together, these two polyurethane chemicals react to each other and produce an expanding foam. By guiding this expansion within the confines of a mold, one can make this dense foam assume a specific shape, such as that of a steering wheel. The process is called reaction injection molding. They coat the mold cavity with a release agent to prevent sticking. Place the armature inside, then inject the polyurethane chemicals. The chemicals react and the foam instantly expands within the mold cavity, encasing the armature. Prior to injection, they also sprayed the mold cavity with protective paint. It tints the foam the required color, in this case black. It also protects the foam against wear and UV damage. The injection molding process leaves excess polyurethane on the steering wheel, so the next step is to trim it off. With the steering wheel structure complete, it's now time to install the components. These switches control the features operable from the steering wheel. Workers assemble them into housings called finishers. The finishers are molded out of plastic resin, then coated with metallic paint for a high-end look. The switch wiring has already been assembled into a unit called a wire harness. They connect the harness to the switches and install it onto the steering wheel. Then they check that everything functions properly. And if it does, they mark the assembly to show that it passes this stage of quality control. After applying a barcode sticker, they route the wiring through the steering wheel to prepare it for final assembly on the automaker's assembly line. Next, they install spring mechanisms. These support the airbag module, enabling it to move in and out when you sound the horn. Then they attach the horn plate, to which the car maker will later attach the driver's side airbag module. They take the ground wire in the wire harness and position it. Then flip the steering wheel and secure the switch finishers to the exposed back of the armature. Then they install a back cover made of plastic resin, the color matching the rest of the steering wheel. A robot arm equipped with a camera performs a thorough quality control inspection. While the basics are the same, features vary from model to model. Higher end steering wheels are wrapped in leather and often have extra switch controls for the audio system and for hands-free use of a cell phone.